It's no secret, inside of the CG community, procedural materials are considered, well, sexy. So today, I thought we'd go over the basic structure of a procedural material and how easy it can be to create inside of Octane Render. But before we get started, I want to thank the Patreons. If you are a Patreon, thank you for your support. We appreciate you so much that we'll be launching an exclusive video and asset link accompanying this video. So if you're interested in exclusive assets and videos and supporting this channel, you can check out the link below. Let's get started. Okay guys, we'll be jumping right in. I got my model right here and I've already created a composite material. So do so if you wanna follow along. So basically all materials have the same three layers in their structure. We have our first layer, which we'll call material one in this case. Let's go and bring in a sub material. So we could call this our base layer and I'm gonna leave it white for now. We'll go to basics and we'll call this base layer. The next layer we have is our edge layer. So we'll bring, bring it out right here bring in a sub material and we'll call it edge layer. And just for visual purposes, I'm gonna turn it red for now. And then finally, we have our dirt layer or rust layer. It really depends on the type of material that you're using. Uh, but for this, it's gonna probably be a rust layer because we're gonna be creating a metal type material. So we'll bring it out and add in our sub material. And we'll just name that rust. And for visual purposes, I'll make it blue. So now that our base structure is set up, let's go ahead and start adding ways that we can creatively mix these materials together. And I'm gonna start off with the edge layer first because that's a pretty simple one. What we'll do is we'll drag down our edge layer. And then from material two mask, I'm gonna pull out a gradient. I always like to start with gradients because you can easily remap whatever you're inputting. So we have our gradient right there. And from our gradient, I'm gonna drag in a dirt node. So you can see our dirt node is a little bit uh, overpowering our model. What we're actually gonna do, and this is another reason I like to use gradients, is we'll go to our gradient and let's just invert it. And now we should only have the red coming through in certain parts. So you can notice just a little bit of red coming through. Let's go ahead and bring up the strength and the radius. Now I called this the edge layer and it's not really sitting on the edges, is it? It's sitting more in the crevices. We can easily fix that though with a invert normal. And now it's on our edges. And this is the part of the material that you would expect to receive the most amount of scratches, bumps, and scrapes. However, there's an issue with this and it's way too uniform. It's mapping perfectly on all the edges, which could be nice in some situations, but in this situation, it's just not gonna work. But luckily we have the dirt map. So let's go ahead and drag that out and pull in an image texture. For the type of material that I wanna be mimicking is gonna be a scratched worn metal. So I actually already have a texture saved that is scratched metal roughness, and that's gonna be perfect. So let's go ahead and drag that in. And now our image texture is help informing our dirt map on how to spread. However, it's kinda of not coming through enough, and that's partially because of the, the specific values of this uh, scratched metal. So we can bring in a gradient, and we can start clamping it down and the more we clamp it, the more detail we'll get out of it. And let's go ahead and do a transform and projection because this is not UV'd. So we'll drop a transform right there and the projection node right there. And let's go ahead and do a box projection. I'm gonna punch D to solo that box projection. And that's looking a little too big for the scale of this scene. So I'll bring it down just a little bit. Something like that looks a little bit more realistic. And I'll unsolo it. Now you'll see we have a lot more variation. This is without the dirt map. And this is with the dirt map. Let's go and solo this gradient right here. I think we can make this dirt map come through a little bit more. So let's go ahead and bring the whites down. And let's go ahead and increase the radius of our dirt shader. I'm gonna bring the tolerance and distribution up just a little bit while bringing the detail up as well. That looks pretty good, but it's coming through a little too much right there. So I'm just gonna adjust our strength again and maybe bring our radius down a little bit more. And again, I'm gonna clamp down some of our white values. So now we have a nice balance between showing our edges and also adding variation to those edges. Next, let's create a rust layer. And this process is gonna be fairly similar to the one we just did. We'll bring in another gradient and then from that gradient, we'll bring in another dirt node. And then again, we'll bring in another gradient. And I'm just gonna copy our previous texture and projection. We'll plug that in. And let's go ahead and invert this first gradient again. And it looks like we're gonna have to change our strength a little bit higher. You can kind of see it coming through. 
maybe bring our radius up a bit as well. And there we go. So this actually makes sense for these areas to be rusted because of the crevices of the material. This is where you would expect dirt, water, and other particles to settle on, kind of wearing down your metal and rusting it. So this looks pretty nice, except we're kind of running into this problem where we have scratches on our rust, which you wouldn't necessarily expect. And I think what we can do is pull in a more rusty, grungy material. And I actually have one right here. So what I'll do is I'll drag this in over the scratches and use a rust image. Let's go ahead and solo that rust image by punching D. And let's play with the scale a little bit. I think we could scale it down a bit. That looks pretty good right there. We're definitely gonna have to bring down our whites to get them to come through. And maybe we could bring our blacks up also. So this looks pretty good. I'm kind of eating a little bit too much into the contrast. And you're getting these sharp scales. So kind of just be careful with that. If I bring it up a little bit more, that is looking a lot more like rust. And I I think I could even bring, bring this up more a bit and bring this black down a bit. Then we can go to our strength, bring it up some, and also increase our radius, bring up our detail, increase the tolerance and distribution a little bit. So now it's spreading a lot. It might be a little too much. Let's go and bring that radius back down some. And now that's looking pretty nice. So that concludes the full base material, the full base structure of a procedural material inside of Octane. If you want to take this a little bit further, you can check out our Patreon video in the link below. Our Patreons allow us to release videos to the public, so if you're a supporter or you want to support the channel even further, you can go ahead and check out the Patreon video below for weekly exclusive access to videos and content. If not, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.